the son of a god, the all father of the queenships and the main villain. Even though Yuhaba was introduced quite late in the story, his presence is felt from the very beginning. Quinches, as a concept, is introduced in the very first episodes or chapters, where you learn about the conflict between them and the Shinigamis and how they were eradicated by the Shinigamis. There is also Ishida Uryu, the last Quinche alive. Well, I don't know why he has that title, because there is also his father, but whatever. Uryu is one of the main characters, so he is present all the time. But the most interesting indirect presence of Yuhaba is from the old man Zangetsu. Zangetsu is the manifestation of Ichigo's Quinshi's powers and it took the form of Yuhaba from 1000 years ago. His personality is a bit different. Yuhaba showed some affection and compassion for his fellow Quinshi's, calling them sons, but it's definitely not like the mother figure that Zangetsu is for Ichigo, helping and guiding him every time he needed. Other than that though, yeah, this guy is literally Yuhaba. Even his tensor Zangetsu form shows how Yuhaba looked when he was younger. So what exactly is his deal and why he is such a main piece and has such a big influence on the world of Bleach? Well, let's start with who exactly Yuhaba is and how he came to be. There is not too much information about Yuhaba's past, but we can speculate quite a bit with what we have, and also using his reference. He and his followers are based on Christianity and Jesus, the son of the god and his angels, who on his second coming will bring the end of the world as we know it and will unite the dead and the living into a single world. There are many similarities like this. The multiple eyes is another good one, but I'm not expert in Christian lore, so let's just focus mainly on what we have in the story. There was a time where death didn't exist and there was only one world, well except hell that was separate from the beginning, but that's a different story. This all changed when the Soul King divided the realm into three different worlds. The world of the living, the world of the hollows and the world of the souls also known as soul society. Now Yuhaba claims that the soul king is his father, but we don't know if it's literal or not. He could be his biological son, but he could also also be like Jesus, where he is his son but not in a direct way, where physical contact with a woman was involved. We also don't know if Yuhaba was alive before or after the world separation, but from what we've seen in the anime, especially in this scene, it looks like he was born before the separation, but he also talks like he was born after. But right now, let's assume he was born before the separation. So maybe this act affected him and he started to regress in age until he became a baby. Either way, if he was born or he became like this, it doesn't really matter. The real problem was that the baby could not speak, hear, see or even move. He was only alive and he continued to live despite that, but he also gained a new ability. During this period, humans didn't have the best time. Now they could die and with death, suffering and fear also appeared. At some point, people had found the baby and discovered that upon touching him, they gained something they lacked. Illnesses were cured, their missing limbs grew back, the lonely had their hearts filled and the list just goes on. The baby had the ability to share parts of his soul, but the interesting part was that when the person who took a piece of his soul will die, their soul will be absorbed by the baby with all the power, knowledge and abilities they had. So he was kinda farming. Welcome to the rice fields, motherfucker! Also those who got a piece of his soul will die no longer after that. They will live only for a few years months or even days, and yet they kept longing for his soul. Throughout the years, more and more people started to worship the baby as a divine being and he continued to absorb their souls. He eventually started to see, hear and even move. With each soul he absorbed back, he became more powerful. He started to age and could hear a name that people kept calling him. It was the name of the god they worship, so he decided to make that name his own. The people called the God Child and from here on he became their leader and their God and he continued to share his soul with his followers so he could harvest it back. 
this is how Quincy's came to be. People who longed for something and got powers from Yuhaba. Because of this, Yuhaba was connected to all the Quincy's and kinda could do anything he wanted with them. But this ability had a massive downside. Yuhaba needed to do this process continuously. If he ever stops to share and harvest his soul, his powers will diminish and he will become a baby without any senses yet again. He is forced to never end the battle and there is no way he could escape from this. But the more he and his Quincy's continued to battle and grow stronger, he became even more powerful. Besides power and knowledge, when he absorbed the soul, he also got their emotion. This motivated further his main goal. Yuhaba hated that his father became just a vessel without any limbs who hold the three worlds in place. He could feel all the suffering and fear from all the people he absorbed because of this separation and he wanted to end the suffering from both humans and his father. Around 200 years after his birth or rebirth, he made his own empire called Lichtrein and raised an army of Quinches. With it, he conquered the nearby villages and territories, expanding his own. They also killed any hollows in the way, because hollows were poisonous for Quinches. Probably because they are impure souls or something like that. But unlike Shinigamis who cleanse the souls and send it back to soul society, Quinches completely eradicate the hollow with the soul and and this created imbalance. Eventually Yuhaba wanted to invade the soul society and learn the truth about his father and to reunite the three worlds into one just like before so death will no longer exist and maybe he will also be free of his curse. The soul society learned about Yuhaba's plan for invasion and also the fact they were killing hollows so Hyosube Ichibe the first king guard and probably one of the few Shinigamis who lived before the separation had come to negotiate a truce with Yuhaba. They will let Quinches alone and let them expand and prosper in the human world and in exchange Yuhaba needed to let the soul society to deal with the hollows and stop any intentions of invading them. But of course Yuhaba refused because he wants to destroy what soul society tries to protect. There is no peace in this separated world. This is when he reveals his second power inherited from his father the Almighty, represented by a multitude of pupils. This ability has the power of seeing all possible futures, so the user can predict all his enemies' moves. Yuhaba's Almighty is inferior to that of his father. That version can also rewrite the reality based on the future he saw, so he can get the outcome he desires. But even without that, it is still powerful. So Ichibe decided to show Yuhaba a glimpse of the truth and he saw for the first time the Soul King, despite being his father. This is probably because of that baby form. After all, he didn't even have a name and he was not very conscious in that form. But if you go back to the theory that he predates the world separation, it could be that his memories about that period were lost. This vision, instead of making Yuhaba understand and stop, it actually further motivated him to pursue his ultimate goal to kill the Soul King and reunite the world. Because of the danger of the Almighty, Ichibe gave Yuhaba the left arm of the Soul King, but his eyes were forever sealed. And before Ichibe leaves, he tells Yuhaba to live a modest and simple life and to forget about his goal. But of course, he didn't. Not too long after, he actually discovered a new way to separate his soul and engrave it into the form of a letter, giving that person much greater power and abilities. These quinches are called Stenritter, and with them, Yuhaba started the invasion of Soul Society. The problem was that that Gote 13 at that time was the most powerful and savage up until now. So the majority of Quinches were killed and Yuhaba in the end was defeated and killed by Sasakibe and Yamamoto. The invasion failed and after that a few Quinches remained in the human world and the most loyal to Yuhaba or the ones that survived the invasion hid in the shadows of the Soul Society, a different dimension called Wonderwai. All of this happened 1000 years ago, but this was not the end for the Quinchy King. He was not really dead and this is where the prophecy have started. In 900 years Yuhaba will recover his heartbeat, in 90 years his intellect and in 9 years his power. And there is also a bonus part where in 9 days he will recover the world. This revival could be connected to his soul powers. After his almost death he will need to continue to absorb the souls of his followers and in 1000 years he will be back and 
so he did. But until then there was another incident, 200 years ago. The remaining Quinches in the human world continued to kill Hallows, so the Shinigami had to interfere and eradicated almost all the Quinches that remained there, with the only exception being the Ishida's family. Well, there were also the ones in Wonder Why, but nobody knew about them yet. After Yuhaba got his poles and mine back 990 years later from the first invasion, he began gathering the Quinches and starting a selection program called Aus Vienne. With this ability he took back the power from all the Quinches he deemed weak or impure, so he will only have the strongest Quinches around for the next invasion. Because of this, Urius and Ichigo's mother died. Ryuken, Uryu's father, wanted revenge from this, and because of the Ausvian weakness, he had the means to do so. After a person is killed by Ausvian, in their hearts remains a clot of silver blood, a substance that kills that person. Ryuken performed autopsy on his wife and extracted this silver blood and created an arrow. This substance has the ability to briefly make Yuhaba lose all of his powers upon contact. This will come back later in the story. Nine years later, Yuhaba recovered his powers and he was ready to start his next attack. He firstly made a warning attack on Soul Society by killing Lieutenant Sasakibe. Then he invaded Huecomundo and made some Arankar's squinches. For well, Mitchells, but mainly to lure out Kurosaki Ichigo, so he will be stuck there while he invaded the Soul Society. This event results in the death of many Shinigamis and Yamamoto Genosai. There was a big difference in this battle in power thanks for the Quinshi's new device which allows them to steal the enemy's Bankai. The attack had to be cut short though because it seems Yuhaba didn't fully recover yet. He has a time limit and he had to return to Wanderway. While everyone prepares for the next battle, Ichigo is at the royal palace where the Soul King is situated. But he didn't have too much time because the next battle already started. This time the Shinigamis were brought into the Quinshi's world and this time Yuhaba was just waiting and absorbing the power of the Quinches that died in this battle. An interesting detail to point out is Yuhaba's appearance. Like I said in the beginning, his age is a symbol of his powers. The younger he looks, the weaker he is. And if you pay close attention, you can notice that his moustache keeps getting bigger, signifying his age and his power growth. When Ichigo finally came to join the fight, Yuhaba made his move. He was actually waiting for Ichigo because his arrival means there is an opening to the Soul King Castle. So he and his own royal guard invaded the royal palace. His royal guard took care of the Zero Division while he will take care of Hyosube Ichibe. During the fight he yet again used Aus Vien and absorbed the souls of all the Quinches except the royal guard, leading to their death. There are also three exceptions but that's another thing. With all that power absorbed back, the seal that was holding the Almighty was broken. And with that power, he defeated Ichibei. After the Zero Division was defeated, Yuhaba was face to face with his father. And he stabbed him with his sword. But that didn't kill him. Because his seal cannot be broken except from the hand of someone with all the powers. Fullbring, Quinshi, Shinigami, Hollow and Human. So Yuhaba used Ichigo once again. This guy really keeps screwing up by just being there. When Ichigo touched Yuhaba's sword to pull it out from the Soul King, the sword actually empowered the influence of his Quinshi blood. Yuhaba's will is tied to all the Quinshis, including Ichigo, and his blood cannot stand the Soul King. So against his own will, Ichigo killed the Soul King. Yuhaba then absorbed all of his father powers and upgraded the Almighty, or from Japanese the all-knowing and all-powerful, making him a real god that can bend the reality to his will and even his appearance was changed. Now he has this black mist full of eyes over his top half face. With this he began to rebuild the world. He first remade the royal palace into his own new base called Varveld. God, I'm so tired of saying all of those names. Using the pieces of his old base. I mean, it kind of looks the same, but just a bit bigger. Now, depending when you watch this video, the next part might contain spoilers if you're an anime only fan. So if you don't want to be spoiled, just click off this video and watch it later or something else. I don't know. Okay, if you're still here, let's finish this story.
Now, to cut it short, we will only focus on his final fight with Ichigo. Because the rest is just fights between the Royal Guard and Shinigami and doesn't really have too much to do with the story except cool battles, I guess. Ichigo tries to fight Yuhaba. He tries to use his new hollow powers, but that barely does anything. Then he uses his new Bankai, but in just a fraction of a second, Yuhaba destroyed the blade. He didn't even have a chance to use it. Ichigo keeps trying to do something, but Yuhaba keeps changing the future, so he is unable to do anything. All of his moves are already seen by Yuhaba. During this, Yuhaba asks Ichigo to not despair, because there is no bigger pain for a parent that having to kill a child in despair. Ichigo, thanks to his friends, manages to repair Tensa Zangetsu, but when he attacks again it was broken just as quickly as the first time. The only thing that somewhat seems to work on him was Aizen Kyoka Suigetsu this guy is really the main character. Because with that Aizen altered Yuhaba's perception on reality. Yuhaba wouldn't be sure if or how to alter the reality because he didn't know what was real. So Ichigo managed to land a big hit on him. But he revived just a few seconds later because you know he just rewrite the future where he dies. So the question is how exactly can they defeat him? Well with the help of the silver blood arrow. Ryuken gave the arrow to his son Wuryu and with it he shot Yuhaba. He lost all of his powers for a few seconds, maybe even less, and Ichigo goes to strike him during that moment. Yuhaba tries to break the sword again, but he only destroyed the outer shell and Zangetsu reversed back to its original form. And with it, Ichigo manages to cut Yuhaba in half killing him for good this time. Just as he saw in one of his visions, that future wasn't changed. What is truly interesting are his last words to Ichigo. The path has been sealed, Ichigo. The path to a world without fear. Because of you, all that has life will continue to live in constant fear of death forever. How disappointing. The world that Yuhaba wanted to create can no longer be made and the three worlds will remain separate. As Aizen said, it is true that Yuhaba was right. In his world or the old world, people will no longer fear death. But there was something that Yuhaba overlooked. The one thing that he asked Ichigo to not lose. Without the fear of death, people will not search for hope and humanity will perish without a purpose. They needed more than just being alive. So, in the long run, Yuhaba would have created a world where people will suffer even more than now. His ultimate goal would have become his ultimate failure. Everyone will have reached despair eventually. Even with all of those eyes and the visions of so many futures, his biggest flaw was that he couldn't see this mistake. And this is where the story of Yuhaba ends. The Quinshi's story though still continues through Ichigo, Uryu and Ryuken. Well, scrap that, Ichigo lost his Quinshi powers during this battle, but from my knowledge of this story and how the creator writes the story, it'll probably come back somehow. So we will have to wait and see what and how big of a role Quinshi's will play in the upcoming Hell arc. Which will definitely be interesting because Hell was never explored despite being introduced so early, in fact I think even earlier than Quinshi's. And another interesting thing is that Hell was always a separate world, even before the Soul King, like I said at the beginning. So again, we will have to wait for more information. I have no idea how long that will take. So I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a comment if you think I missed anything big in this story because this was more of a big picture story. So if you think there are more details that I missed or I should have mentioned please let me know. And I hope I will see you soon in my next video. Bye bye. Oh and also don't forget to subscribe. Please.